Hello do-it-yourselfers, I'm Terry Peterman, the internet electrician. Welcome to another one of my video shorts on current topics. Let's get started. In this video, I'm going to attempt to solve a problem that I actually created when I put a remote control in for my fan light in the bedroom here. We have a passageway that goes right through into our ensuite bathroom and when you come in here at night it's dark and of course the remote for the fan and light I have some velcro here on the wall by the old switch for it and we usually try to keep it there but lots of times it's forgotten over on the bedside table so when you walk in here at night just to go into the washroom or pass through onto our patio it's pretty dark so if the lights off there is a switch here for the switched receptacles that I've left that turns on our bedside lamps. But I'm going to install instead of having to turn that switch on because it's a little inconvenient. We've got French doors in here and sometimes this door is either pinned closed or somewhere between open and fully open and closed I should say. So it's a little inconvenient to get at this light switch. So the solution I think that's going to do it for me is this motion occupancy sensor. It's a motion switch from Leviton. It's a number IPS D6. So it's the Illumitech occupancy sensor and dimmer from Leviton. So I'm going to put that here on the uh, switched receptacle and also it should solve the problem that in the middle of the night if you're stirring or you get up you don't want those lights turning off and on so we can shut them off by the bedside just with the lamp switch at night so we don't have to be fumbling around looking for the light switch to shut them off when we get up in the middle of the night. So anyway, let's get at this. We're going to install this right here in this three gang receptacle. So the first thing we have to do is remove this faceplate. Three gang switch assembly here that we used to have switched receptacle. We used to have the van and the light all in uh, separate switches. But now when I put that remote control in, we're down to one switch to power up the fan light and a blank. Okay, we've got the plate off. Now we just need to remove this switch position that's for the switched receptacles. And this is where we're going to install our occupancy sensor. All right, so I've pulled the switch out now. I shut the breaker off, but this is where we just want to make sure that the power is off. So I'm going to test with my meter, my Fluke T5-1000. T5 and I'm just going to check here from ground. Nothing there. Ground to the uh, on terminal. And from ground to the hot wire and nothing there. So good. Power's off. I've just got some external lighting in here for my filming. Now we can go ahead and remove the wires off of this switch. So with this switch comes a pretty extensive uh, set of instructions. It uh, can be used as a three-way switch as well as single pole. So you've got the specs on everything here and how to set up the dimming that you'll want to read up on. But we're mostly concerned with now how to connect this in a single pole situation, which is what we have. So we have just one hot wire on one side of the old single pole switch we removed and then a light uh, wire going out to the switched receptacles, one half of the receptacles in the bedroom here. So there is the diagram we're interested in. It's the single pole wiring application. So it says the black terminal is the hot wire in and that was also the black wire on our single pole switch and then the red wire happens to be connected to the red terminal of this particular switch in a single pole application. So that's what we're looking at. We've got a ground to connect. We've got the hot wire going to the black terminal as they state here. And then the red wire going to the load. Kind of a schematic here and a practical wiring diagram as well. So there you have it. We connect this switch just like it shows in the instructions. All right, so I've zoomed in my shot nice and tight here so you can see the connections I'm making. On this switch, I recommend that you use the terminals as a straight push in, push the wire in and then tighten the, the terminal screw. So as you can see, they've got a strip gauge on the back of the switch here. 
and that's how much wire they want you to have exposed before you poke it into the terminal. So we're about correct here. First off, we're going to connect the ground wire. So that goes straight in. Tighten that ground terminal, give it a tug. Make sure it's in there nice and tight. Black terminal for the hot. So that's going to go straight in here. You see that? Look right into the terminal there. And tighten that screw. And again, give it a little tug to make sure it's nice and tight. Turn it over. And then turn the switch over and connect the red wire. Make sure it's nice and tight. And again, tug on it. <clears throat> Make sure we got a good connection. Again, this red wire is actually painted white. A little overspray from the, the painters, but there you can see it's a red, a red wire. And now we're ready to push this back into the box with the and put the device mounting screws in place. So just finish tightening down the device screws, device mounting screws. And with a three gang installation such as this, you want to make sure that your devices are all evenly spaced so that your plate's going to fit properly. So before you get them too tight, you want to test fit that. And yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks like I can tighten the bottom a little bit more. So once you've got the device back installed, it's safe to turn the power back on. And you need to make some settings here. So you can pull the face off of the device and there's three different adjustment setting screws here. One of them is for the minimum level dimming adjustment. So that's, uh, you don't want the lights to go too low if you maybe have compact fluorescence that uh, can't, can't operate at a real low dimming level. So that's where you adjust that dimming level. Then here's a light level adjustment. So you might not want these lights to come on if there's already enough ambient light in the room. So that's a setting from zero to three. We're gonna go about a two on that. And then the other one is the time selection. So there's four different settings from 30 seconds to 30 minutes. I only want 30 seconds, so I'm gonna set that at zero. So got those set, you can play with those later, but good to know where they are and how you pull that off. It clips in at the top and snaps into place. Now there's also an air gap here so if you're changing light bulbs and you want to make sure the power doesn't uh, come on or the power doesn't get restored to the fixture while you're changing lamp bulbs or anything of course with lamp you can unplug it but here you can just pull this out to the air gap position and that won't allow any power to the circuit but always the safest bet is to shut off the breaker when you're working on anything. So we'll push that back in now we can install the plate. And now we put the plate on. And installing that last plate screw. And again, as I like to do, line up all my plate screws, either vertically or horizontally. I prefer, prefer vertically. And there you have it. We've got the motion switch in place. Let's test it out and see if it works as I have hoped and dreamed. All right, so I've got everything hooked up. Ball put back together. Let's see if this works as I had hoped. Here's the normal situation with the bedroom door open and walking into the room. Let's see if those bedside lamps turn on as soon as I enter. Ah, just as I had hoped. Now I'm going to try it from the other direction here. All right, now entering the room from the other end as I walk out of the bathroom and into the room. Perfect just as I'd hoped. So thanks again for watching. I'm Terry Peterman, the internet electrician. Thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something useful from this video. 
My goal is to help you out with your small home electrical projects or minor repairs and to help you complete them both safely and competently. Please feel free to like, comment, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel here. And for more helpful information, visit my website at electrical-online.com. And if you'd like to learn more about home electrical, my program, The Basics of Household Wiring, is simply the best electrical educational information you will find. And it's available as a DVD or an instant download. I also use this information as the core material for my best-selling course at udemy.com called Learn the Basics of Household Wiring, the Electrical System A to Z. And of course, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter. But what if you need help with something right away? I'm one of the experts on the Magnify app. That's Magnify with an I. You download the app and search for the internet electrician from your smartphone. You can get instant assistance. And I'm also a certified expert on the JustAnswer.com team. There are links below in the description here to everything that I've told you about. So until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Terry Peterman, the internet electrician.